Hundreds of thousands of meteorites described by meteorite hunters as like money from the sky could be hidden in Antarctica. Here's what scientists have discovered. An artificial intelligence program has used satellite data to project that more than 300,000 meteorites may lie undiscovered on the surface of Antarctica, according to a new study in the Science Advances Journal. When the meteorites fall on Antarctica, snow accumulates on top of them before compacting and becoming ice. The ice sheets flow toward the ocean, dragging the meteorites with them. But if conditions are right, the meteorites can become trapped near the surface of bare blue ice, which makes them easy to recover. Having successfully identified almost 83% of known meteorite-rich Antarctic zones, the new AI program projected more than 600 potentially meteorite-rich zones, with many unexplored, and the study's lead author told Space.com that new discovery techniques, such as the use of drones, could combine with the projections to create a new era of Antarctic meteorite recovery missions. Space.com explains that as meteorites are space rocks that were originally part of planetary bodies, those previously found in Antarctica have offered valuable clues about the nature, origins, and evolution of the rest of the solar system, on top of any financial value. Almost two-thirds of all meteorites recovered on Earth originate in Antarctica, although the new study estimates that those discovered so far may only represent between 5 and 13 percent of those actually present on its surface. Live Science reports that recent scientific studies have found a number of fascinating phenomena hidden under the three-kilometer-deep ice sheet that covers Greenland. One of these hidden phenomena is a huge canyon that is almost as big as the Grand Canyon. Stretching for 740 kilometers, this hidden canyon is up to 10 kilometers wide and up to 800 meters deep in places. Another study found a massive plan in the middle of Greenland that lies below sea level. This strange depression is probably caused by the weight of the ice sheet and is surrounded by a ring of hidden mountain ranges. Scientists were also thrilled to find evidence of a huge ancient lake bed that is now filled with a treasure trove of sample-containing sediment that scientists would love to access one day. Researchers also found evidence of at least 60 small lakes deep below the ice. These are filled with crystal clear water that melted off the ice above. Scientists also found data pointing to at least two large meteor craters under the ice, and when an old ice core sample was studied more closely, scientists found fossils of plants that lived a million years ago. Earth's crust is being warped by melting ice. Here's what you need to know. The melting of Earth's polar ice is incrementally warping the planet's crust both vertically and horizontally, according to a new study in the Geophysical Research Letters Journal. Scientists already knew about a process called isostatic rebound, whereby when a glacier melts, the crust below it is released from the weight previously on top of it and so very gradually rises up, in some cases over thousands of years. However, the new study, cited by SciTech Daily, adds to this concept, noting that the deformation of the crust is actually three-dimensional and thus includes horizontal movements as well as vertical ones. The study adds that rather than simply affecting the areas directly below the ice loss, deformation was also found to have global impacts, with Greenland ice sheet and Arctic glacier melting, causing deformation that extends over much of the northern hemisphere, for instance. Case studies showing the incremental scale of the deformation include London, which the study says moved, roughly, between 0.04 and almost 0.2 millimeters vertically every year from 2006 to 2010, plus similar distances to the north and east. The study's lead author, Sophie Coulson, explained that we should think of a wooden board floating on top of a tub of water. When you push the board down, you would have the water beneath moving down. If you pick it up, you'll see the water moving vertically to fill that space. Colson added that the implications of this kind of movement are far-reaching. In some parts of Antarctica, for example, the rebounding of the crust is changing the slope of the bedrock under the ice sheet, and that can affect the ice dynamics, she said, before suggesting that this science could also aid our ability to accurately observe tectonic motions and earthquake activity, where we need to be able to separate out the motion generated by modern-day ice mass loss. Elsewhere, the deformation also provides a window into the past where we can still see a rebounding effect from the end of the last ice age, roughly 11,000 years ago, according to SciTech Daily. But far more dramatically, a study by the Chinese Academy of Sciences earlier this year, cited by The Guardian, describes how changes in how the Earth's mass is distributed around the planet cause its axis, and therefore its poles, to move. 
In the past, only natural factors such as ocean currents and the convection of hot rock in the deep earth contributed to the drifting of the poles. But the Chinese research shows that since the 1990s, the loss of hundreds of billions of tons of ice a year into the oceans, resulting from global warming, has caused the poles to move in new directions. The surface layers of Earth are not the only slightly warped aspect of our planet right now. However, as separate new research has just established that far below the crust, the core is growing lopsided for completely different reasons. Earth's inner core grows one millimeter in radius per year, but its east side, beneath Indonesia, is growing faster than its west, beneath Brazil, because it is cooling at a faster rate, causing more iron crystals to form, according to a study in Nature Geoscience. The conversation explains that when Earth was formed, a lot of heat was captured within the planet, and as this has slowly escaped, the inner core's temperature has dropped below the melting point of iron, causing the formation of the crystals. Because of lower temperatures around the east side, iron crystals form more quickly. However, Earth's spherical shape is maintained by constant spinning and the force of gravity, which redistribute the extra mass evenly according to popular mechanics. To establish the disparity, scientists combined the fact that seismic waves travel much faster from north to south through the core than from side to side, with estimates of how iron alloys behave at high pressure, according to the conversation. Popular mechanics attributes the disparity to Indonesia being covered by a mix of islands and expansive sea floor, which is a key place for heat to be shed. The study's lead author said cold tectonic plates diving below Earth's surface may be a cause. Heat loss in Earth's inner core is important because it drives the flow of liquid iron in the outer core, which in turn creates Earth's magnetic field and, according to the conversation, in billions of years, cooling will lead to the whole core to become solid, which will leave Earth without its protective magnetic field and leave us exposed to solar and cosmic radiation. However, if that horrifying future vision is a little too horrifying for you, then you might prefer to know that scientists are also currently in the process of rewriting Earth's past, a long-held theory about a collision with a planet called Thea, which may explain the presence of alien blobs in Earth's mantle and the existence of the moon, has just received an update from scientists writing in the Planetary Science Journal. The problem with the previous theory of how the moon was formed via a single slow collision between Earth and Mars-sized planet Thea, with broken off parts of Thea forming the moon, was that the moon shares much of its chemistry with Earth, not Thea, and that it requires improbably low initial velocity. To explain both phenomena, the new theory suggests an alternative version of events. Rather than hitting the Earth once at low speed, merging then and there and forming the moon, Thea initially hit Earth at higher speeds in a hit-and-run collision, and then, between 100,000 and 1 million years later, the two struck each other again, resulting in a collision that more fully merged the two. Using computer simulations of the massive impacts, scientists concluded that this version of the moon's history is a better fit than what is known as the giant impact hypothesis. Japan's space agency made history last week as it was the first to ever land robot rovers on an asteroid. The rovers have now sent back high-resolution photos of Ryugu's surface. Due to Ryugu's weak gravity, Rover 1A and Rover 1B move around by hopping. Each rover stays in the air for 15 minutes and moves horizontally up to 15 meters with each hop. Rover 1A and Rover 1B are each equipped with multiple cameras which are now taking stereo images of Ryugu. They have also sent back video of the asteroid's rocky surface. For the next part of the mission, the Hayabusa 2 spacecraft, which deployed the rovers, plans to land on Ryugu by bombing the surface with a missile to create a landing zone for the ship. It will then collect asteroid samples. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.